Good morning lovely humans and welcome to another tutorial from Bobbin and Badger. Today we are going to be making a bookmark uh, which is perfect for a treat for yourself or a gift perhaps Valentine's Day or Mother's Day that is coming up when we're recording this. So we're going to start uh, with this part of the bookmark which in the pattern is called the main body. Now if you follow and um, us on our channel you will know there's a free pattern available or if you look uh, underneath the video in the links below there is a link to a free pattern for you to have a go at this. So we're going to start with this part. It's actually fairly simple especially if you watched our how to do a foundation chain video because that is how this project starts. So we're going to chain 36 stitches which make up this part of the bookmark. So I'm just going to start with a, a trusty slip knot and then chain 36. So that's one, two, three, Now we're going to do a UK treble crochet stitch, which is a US double stitch. Um, it's quite nice and soft and floppy, and it is perfect for what we are creating today. So we're going to start our work in the second chain from the hook. I'm gonna use that one for turning again so it's not too tight. So we're gonna wrap over our yarn first, go into that second chain from the hook, pull our yarn through, wrap over again, pull through two, wrap over again, pull through two. Now if you're not familiar with the treble crochet, crochet stitch, then have a look at another one of our tutorial videos which will help you um, get going with that step by step. So once we've done our first one, we are going to treble crochet all the way in each and every chain till we get to the end of the row. Okay, so I'm just coming up now to the end of that first row. I'm just doing my last treble crochet in that very first chain we did. And here I am at the end. So now you have a choice to make. You can either finish off your work there and have a narrow bookmark, or you can chain one at the end of your row, turn your work, and then go back again all the way along, but that depends on how wide you want your bookmark to be when it is completed. So if I just do a few stitches here of that treble crochet again, making sure when I'm going back down this row, I'm going through both parts of the V, then you will get a double width bookmark so I will leave that up to you and your personal choice as to what you do. Personally I quite like a fatter bookmark so I'm going to continue going down um, the end, going down right down to the end of this row so I've got a fatter bookmark and then we will pick up in step three how to make this flower here which is a little bit tricky so we're going to go through it nice and slowly. Okay, so here we have our finished bookmark, uh, and that is step one, the foundation chain, and step two, the treble crochet, and I did two rows. 
So step three is where it gets a little bit more complicated and we're going to go really slowly. So we're going to start with uh, our next colour of wool. The, the bit that we are doing now is going to be this inner bit of the flower. So whichever colour you want that inner bit to do, that's what you need to be working with now. So I'm working with this lilac so it matches the original. So we're going to chain four as a starting point. So there's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. And now we are going to treble crochet in that very first chain. So we're going to yarn over, go through, and create a treble crochet. Now we're going to do 10 more of these all in that same hole. So I've done one with the magic and power of film and technology. This will be sped up for you so you don't have to watch me do it. So this is three. Okay, so I'm going to find the end again and just tug it in. It works a little bit like a magic ring and we should be able to close up that hole in the middle. And then I'm going to slip stitch to the top. I'm going to slip stitch into the top of this stitch here. So I'm just going to yarn over, pull it through and then keep going. So we've got a circle. So there we are with the centre of our flower. Okay, so now we have our circle and it is fully round and we've done a slip stitch to keep it together. We're going to add the petals to the flower. Now we have 12 stitches around the outside and you are going to use two stitches to make one petal, which should, if my maths is correct, leave us with six petals. Okay, so we're going to start by chaining two. This is all in the pattern. And then we are going to do one treble crochet next to our chain like that. Okay, so we're starting to build up a bit of a rounded petal shape. We're going to do one treble crochet in the next stitch. We are going to chain two, one, two, and we are going to slip stitch in the same stitch that we started with there. So we create a rounded petal. So we'll go again. We're going to chain two, one, two. We're going to treble crochet into that stitch like so. We're going to treble crochet into the next stitch because we are making our petal over two. We are going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to slip stitch exactly where we just did our treble. And we are starting to make petal shapes. So two down, four to go, chain two, one, Two, treble into the next one, treble into the next one, chain two, one, two, and slip stitch right next to that treble that we've just done. So that's three, one, two, treble in there, Oops. treble in the next stitch, chain two, one, two, and slip stitch right next to the treble. One, two, treble in the next stitch, treble in the next stitch. Two. and slip stitch down at the base of that treble. One more to go, 
chain two, treble, treble in the next stitch. It's a bit tricky back where you started. Chain two, one, two, and slip stitch back at the start. And you can fasten off that colour yarn because we are going to change colour for the second round of our flower. So I'm just finishing that off there and I'll be able to tuck that behind and we have our flower. So it's this first round here and the button when we get to that stage is going to sit right in the middle there. Okay, so we have our bookmark, we have our flower, now if you wanted to you could just put a button straight on there and finish your bookmark like that. However, if you want to add this next round of petals then it's going to get a little bit tricky and we're going to have to go super slow. So if I show you the back of the flower you will see that there is a gap, there is a hole. And we are going to create this part of the flower by chaining stitches so that we can then crochet around the chain that we've made. And like I say, it's a bit complicated, but we're going to go super slow. Now in this original one, uh, this back layer of petals is green. Now it's not been showing up very well on the video, so I'm going to change to this mustard coloured, uh, which should hopefully make it a bit easier for you to see. So we're going to take our flower and we are going to flip it over so we are looking at the back of the flower so there's the front of the flower all nice and neat and the back of the flower is definitely not as neat and we are going to create a chain of stitches that's anchored to this flower so that we can uh, create our next round of flowers now what I want you to look for is between the petals we get this V shape and it doesn't matter which ones you do, there is a little V shape behind your petals just where they sort of meet each other and we're going to use that as our anchor point for this round of crochet. So I'm just going to do a, a slip stitch, a slip knot on there and then I'm going to go behind these V's and it might need a little bit of help with your hook and my nail gets the stitches on quite well and I'm just going to slip stitch through that V so that I'm anchored on to the crochet so I'll just do that again so I've got a slip knot on my hook and I'm going to find a V and I'm going to go through that loop and that loop so they're both on my hook I'm going to yarn over without getting in too much of a knot, she says, and I'm going to pull that yarn through and then through my slip knot. Ah, it's fiddly. And then through there. I'm just going to pull my knot tight so I know it's not going anywhere. So we are anchored on, so we can do whatever we want now. Um, and we are anchored to that first round. So we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And then we are going to slip stitch in the next V along. So again, we're going in them both. Using my nail to wiggle it on. Yarn through and through my yellow one as well. Okay, so we have a chain that is going behind the flower. Now if we turn it over you can't see it and that's that's ideal, that's what we want because we're going to use that chain to build our next petal. So again we're going to chain four, one, two, three, four, we're going to find that next V. Now this is my original where I started and finished so it's not quite clear. It 
doesn't actually matter if you don't get the V as long as it is anchored to both sides of the petal. So that will hold the petal together. Okay, so one, two, three, four. I'm going to find my V, there it is. Push through. Okay, so we now have one, two, three, four, five, six chains going behind our first lot of petals. And we're going to stay working in this reverse side to do our next row of petals. Now we're just going to do a slip stitch from where we finished off to get us over to our first chain. And we are going to work our new row of petals around this chain. So we're going to start by chaining two. We are going to do three treble crochets and we're going to just wrap them. We're just going to go into that gap like we would if it was a magic ring. That's two and that's three. We are going to chain two again and slip stitch into that same gap there. So if you look from the front we have a second row of petals in the gap behind the first row which is really lovely. So working on the back again we're going to slip stitch into the next space along. I've got my purple caught up in it there. We are going to chain two. One, two, we are going to do three treble crochets, that's one, that's two, and that's three, like that. We are going to chain two, one, two, and slip stitch into the same space, which gives us two petals which from the front is now looking rather lovely. So I'm going to carry on and again with the magic of film and television it will all be sped up so that you can see what it looks like when we have all six petals working around the chains that we've just made. just finishing the last treble crochet. My last chain two. My last slip stitch. And I'm going to snip off my yarn. And I might actually just do another little slip stitch around there so it keeps all my petals together. 
and I'm going to finish off on the back there so my yarn is out of the way. Like that. So there, if we look at the front, there's a little bit of rearranging. We have our purple first petals. Because of the way this works, they're pushed forward slightly so it's very 3D. And then we have our six larger petals behind. So the back of the crochet, you can see where our original chains were. And when you turn it over, it looks lovely from the front. So all that's left to do now is sew in all our ends, pop a button on and attach it to our bookmark and we are good to go. Okay, so we are now ready to sew together the parts of the bookmark that we have made. So I have sewn in my ends on my flower and on my bookmark so it's neat and tidy. And I have chosen the handmade with love buttons that I really like and use for a lot of our bobbin and badger things. So the button's going to sit in the middle of the flower. Uh, choose one that fits nicely there in the middle and we're going to use the button to attach it to the end of our bookmark. So if you look at the back, we know the button is in the middle, so if we make sure the bookmark covers that middle hole on the back, then we know we are going to stitch the bookmark to the flower. So we're going to come up from the back, make sure your embroidery needle or your tapestry needle fits through the hole of your button. Um, it is very annoying when you forget to do that and you have to stop and go and root around for another needle. So we're going to go up, we're going to go down, just making sure we're catching the pink. And then we're just going to do it again. If we can find the hole, that is. And down again. It doesn't need to be as secure as a button on a piece of clothing. The only work it's doing is holding everything together and turn over. So the button is holding the back of the bookmark nicely. So all we need to do is tie off, sew in our ends again. Let's tie it off. I'm going to sew the ends in. I'm just going to go through the bookmark and poke out at the flower just so I can get a neat and tidy finish. Snip there. Thread the needle with the other loose end. And pull through. And then snip. And we have a finished bobbin and badger bookmark ready to be given as a gift or to be enjoyed by yourself. So once again, if you uh, haven't subscribed to our videos before, please do now so make sure you don't miss anything and the pattern will be uh, available underneath the video in the comments for you to download and have a go at yourself. Thanks for watching.